Well, good day, gentlemen. Dirk with the MGTOW Solution here with the topic, MGTOW Demographics. A while back, I was reading the comments from a 15-year-old young man concerning a red pill video. He was expressing an interest in starting his own MGTOW channel. It kind of took me off guard because when I was 15, I was pretty much obsessed with girls, so I couldn't really imagine what would drive such a young man to MGTOW so early in life. It seemed like kind of a sad situation. I even wondered if maybe he was a true forced loneliness kid, tired of getting rejected by the girls. But on further reflection, I realized that I don't have a clue what it's like to be 15 in the year 2018, because I'm in my 50s. It was a different world when I was that young. But I would imagine that a teenager goes MGTOW for the same reasons the rest of us do to avoid trouble with women, and to have better lives. And figuring that out at an early age has got to be a good thing. On the surface, one could assume that a 15-year-old doesn't have enough experience to go MGTOW. But Stardust made the astute observation that you don't have to personally experience something terrible in order to avoid it. You don't have to actually get bitten by a shark to know that you should stay out of shark-infested waters. The fact is, this teenager was watching MGTOW videos and so was learning some harsh truths that they aren't teaching in school. And he probably had it all confirmed by the behavior of girls who can be just as spoiled, irrational, and demanding as their mothers. But today, young men have much greater access to information so they know they have alternatives to playing the dating and marriage game. Still, part of me can't quite get my head around the idea of someone taking the red pill at 15, so I hope the young man pops up with a MGTOW channel so he can provide that perspective. I also read a posting from a 70-year-old man who had just gone MGTOW. Better late than never. But imagine what life will be like for that 15-year-old kid if he's still MGTOW at 70. That's 55 years of freedom. We cover a broad age range, but also a broad spectrum of experiences. Like the guys who never got married, compared with the guys who got married five times. And then there's the variable of how many total years men were married. I've been married twice, and I know there are men who consider anyone who gets married more than once to be a dumbass. They've told me as much, and I generally agree with them, with the caveat that I'm no longer that same dumbass. But what if the comment is coming from a man who was only married once, but was married for, say, 26 years? I was only married for 10 years total, counting both marriages. So who's the bigger dumbass? Or, what if the comment came from someone who proudly proclaims that he's never been married, but he's 23 years old? It wouldn't carry as much weight as if it came from a man who had never been married at age 50. Not that any of that really matters, it's just that most of our interactions are online, so we don't have much to go on besides a person's avatar. This is why I'm hoping that even though we're a loose-knit group, we can come up with some kind of a network for MGTOW to get together in person. To this day, I haven't met another MGTOW face-to-face that I'm aware of. And I know I'm not the only guy to bring this up. We just need someone to step up and get it done. I actually tried starting a MGTOW group on meetup.com. I only gave it a month-long trial, and I had eight men join, but nobody would even meet for a beer or coffee, so I can exit. it. There's probably a better way to do it, and if you have any ideas about that, please post it in the comments. Personally, I'd love to sit down with like-minded men and share ideas. Once you go your own way, it's pretty much a fresh start, and the past isn't nearly as important as the future. When I heard about the guy who got married five times, my first response was, Holy fuck. My next thought was, I'll bet he's ready for MGTOW. Very ready. We're all here for the same reason, to find a lifestyle that actually works in modern life. 
Men going their own way works very well for a lot of men, in all age brackets and with all kinds of different backgrounds. We can operate in a sometimes hostile environment with a kind of quiet confidence that comes from simply being able to see things clearly. We're not easily manipulated or taken advantage of, and I think people can sense that, whether they're male or female. And this can be developed at any age, regardless what path your life has taken or how many bad decisions you've made in the past. I think this is going to lead to a lot of men accomplishing a lot of great things. Tesla stated, I do not think you can name many inventions that have been made by married men. And he has a point. The amount of psychic drain from demanding wives is probably vastly underestimated outside of the red pill community. We're the ones who have usually experienced life both as indentured servants and as free men, so we know the difference. And the difference is staggering. I shudder to think at all the emotional and psychic energy I wasted in my blue pill years. A lot of human potential is being unlocked here, and it's already leading to some amazing results. Since I titled this video MGTOW Demographics, you might be expecting me to talk about race, income, religion, and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that because I don't think those things are as important as our individual experiences. Besides, there's not much data on MGTOW yet, so there's not much to evaluate. The most important thing is that we're men, and most of us have had some bad experiences as a result of being born male. Otherwise, we'd have no need for something like MGTOW. And this isn't something that's only affecting certain subgroups of men, like Americans or Canadians or blacks or whites. The demonization of men is a global effort and requires a global solution, which of course is already happening. Even my humble little channel is already seeing participation from England, Australia, and the Middle East. And the feminist agenda doesn't care about anything other than whether or not you have a penis. If you do, nothing else about you even matters. You're a privileged, overbearing, ignorant oppressor of women operating from your lofty perch in the patriarchy. End of story. But the solution is expanding daily, one free man at a time, all across the globe. We're mostly just solving our individual problems because that's within our span of control. But the thing is, a lot of us are doing that and women aren't happy about it. Fuck them. They had their chance. If women want to act like men but still be treated like women, all I can say to them is, Good luck with that screeching harpy. I, for one, won't participate in such nonsense. And it's not just men who consider themselves MGTOW seeing the light. It's men in general. Feminists are currently shooting themselves in the foot by ramping up their rhetoric. They don't realize it yet, but that's what they're doing. All things male are under attack. As a result, men are avoiding women more every day. Just look at marriage rates. You don't have to take the red pill to see what a shitty deal marriage is, so guys are opting out. Men are also avoiding women at work, because the false harassment gun is set on a hair trigger. What did they expect? Women have been screaming for decades that they don't need men, women are actually superior, blah blah blah. To them I'd say, why don't you go into the kitchen and fix yourself a nice big hot mug of shut the fuck up because we're giving you the chance to prove it. You'd think they'd be thanking God for MGTOW, but they're not. All this time I thought they wanted us to get out of the way and leave them alone, but now that we are, that's a problem too. This is precisely why it's best to simply walk away. So, when a 15-year-old girl starts wondering why 15-year-old boys are ignoring her, she can thank her feminist role models. They're the ones who made gynocentrism so blatantly obvious that even a teenage boy can see it. 
At some point, I would expect someone to do a study on the demographics of men going their own way. I mean, we have gender studies professors now, and this is a relevant gender issue. So, wouldn't you think someone would pick up that ball and run with it? You would think so, but it isn't likely to happen, because nobody cares. At least, not yet. But women may collectively get to the point where they say, Oh fuck, what have we done? But this will be just like the woman who divorced her husband suddenly realizing that she made a terrible mistake, and it'll be too late. That's the problem with taking people for granted. Sometimes they tell you to fuck off. And all those women who don't wear the feminist badge but enjoy benefiting from the movement, they can also fuck off. They're endorsing feminist supremacy with their silence. And because this affects men and boys of all ages and from all walks of life, we're seeing MGTOW of all ages and from all walks of life. With every feminist victory, we have an equal but opposite reaction in the form of more men choosing to go their own way. Problem solved. The bottom line is this. When men are ready to take the red pill, they take it. Then, in most cases, their lives start improving. If you're finding my work useful, hit subscribe, bang the bell, and maybe give it a thumbs up. And thumbs up all MGTOW videos, because that helps spread the word to other 15-year-olds, 70-year-olds, and everyone in between. Live free, gentlemen, and have a great day.